This video is about Entity View and is a guided tour about almost everything you can do there. Hopefully you'll discover something you maybe didn't already know. Let's take a look at Entity View. So in the top left, we have the space name. This is the space where the database this entity belongs to lives. And we have the project. That's the name of the database. If you click on that, you get taken to the space configuration. So you can do full configuration of the project database. Here we have a button that allows you to copy the URL for this entity view. And that can be quite useful if you want to share a link with a colleague. If you hold down the Alt key, you get the ability to copy the UUID to the clipboard instead. And that's really useful if you want to do scripting and you need to know that UUID. The star allows you to add this entity to your favorites. So when I click it here, Project A now appears in my favorites in the sidebar. Over on the right hand side, we have these double arrows. These are shortcuts, again, to either the space configuration for this database or to views where the views are of entities in the same database. So here we can go to a view of projects. We also have the button that allows you to open a search pane. Here you can search for any items in your workspace, but notice also there's left and right arrows. So if you don't want to be taken away from project A, you can open a search pane on the right hand side instead of taking up the whole page. Obviously the cross closes entity view and the triple dots is the action menu. There are quite a few things you can do here. I won't go into details with all of them, but I will comment that if you add a button to your database, then the button will show up in your action menu. The sharing buttons here, sharing's very complex, so we won't go into details here, but what I will point out is within the sharing dialog is this button. When you click on that, you can see what access other users have to this entity. And that's a really good way of knowing who might be able to see what or do what. Obviously, Anna and Mark are admins and they can do everything. Steve and Mary aren't admins, but they've got different capabilities. You can see that Mary can update and delete ent this entity. And if you expand, you can see the reasons why. So everyone has viewer access via the operation space, but Mary has additional update and delete access from a custom access template via task one, which is one of the tasks linked to this project. The main page is split into the left column and the right column. You can choose to widen or make narrow the columns and you can choose to hide the right hand column if it's not useful or it's distracting. Typically the left hand column is for the more complex fields like rich text fields or relations to multiple entities or the whiteboards or documents collection, comments field, references and so on. And the right hand column is for the simple fields. So these are relate single relations or simple text field number fields, checkboxes, and so on. If you'd rather, you can replace the right-hand column with the comments pane. And this allows you to see comments. This is comments that are in rich text fields or comments that are to the entity as a whole. And there's a resolve tab so you can see the comments that you've dealt with. Alternatively, you can use the right-hand column to show your activity log. And this is the history of all the changes that have been made to this entity over its lifetime. And in some cases, you'll be able to revert those changes. There's also option here to watch. This means you'll get notified for activity on the project. And so I decide I want to be told if anybody makes any changes to this project. When you have the fields showing in two columns, sometimes having a field, a multiple relation field like tags, taking up space in the left-hand column is not what you need. These are just simple tags 
one word to represent some characteristic of the project. So I decide I don't really want it taking up space over here. So I will move it to the right. And now it behaves like a more compact field on the right hand side. And that makes it easier to add and remove without taking up a lot of space. Similarly, you can do the opposite. So we have a traditional assignees field showing who's assigned to this project. And actually, I want to know a bit more about these people. So I'm going to move it to the left. And now we have the assignees collection showing on the left hand side. And as you can see, I've enabled some fields. So I've enabled the user's name, the avatars, emails and teams. So now you can see more information about the assignees for this project. For fields on the right hand side, it's possible to use what are known as relation filters. This is where you define a filter to limit the number of options that a person can choose from. So for example, when choosing who should be the owner for a project, I can apply a relation filter. By default, user fields have a relation filter of the person is active, so you can't select the activated users. And I could add a static filter, for example, that the person has an admin role. And now the list of choices is reduced. Or I could, for example, choose that I only want the owner to be from the R&D team. I can even use what are known as dynamic filters, which is where the limitation is based on some field in the entity. So in this case, instead of limiting to the R&D team, I can limit to this project's team. So this means that the suggested users will be those who are members of the development team. Let's take a look at the complex fields in the left hand column. Each of these is a collection of related entities. So these are tasks related to the project. And sometimes I want to know a bit more about them. So maybe I want to turn on the effort field and maybe the state field. Now I can see that task one, task 20 and task two, which are all related to project A, have different states. Perhaps I want to rep represent those in a better way. For example, a board view. So instead of just a simple list, I'm going to add a new view. And it's going to be a board view, and I'm going to have the state as columns. So now I can see the, the tasks that are linked to this project, and I can see what state they're in. And again, I can choose to add fields. So maybe again, I want to show people who are linked to this task. Now, when you have fields, sometimes there are different ways of representing the same field. So if I go to my list at the moment, I'm not showing people, but I'll turn on the people. And by default, it's showing an avatar for these different users. Now, I can't remember whether purple MA and brown MA, who they are. They're the same initials or the same similar name. So I'm going to choose for the people field to display it as a compact list instead of as avatars. And now I can see that was Mark and Mary. And for a number of fields, you can choose the way in which they're represented. Sometimes you want to show even more information in a relation view. So at the moment we're showing the tasks, but what if I want to know a bit more about those tasks? I can, for example, add lower level relations. So here I'm showing the tasks that are linked to project A, but also the assignments that are linked to those tasks. A relation view here behaves like a normal data view. You can manipulate it and configure it in all these different ways, color coding, sorting, and it relies on what are called context views. So that is to say that it is context filtered to show only the tasks from project A. You can in fact turn that off. So if you turn that off, you now see all tasks from all projects. Normally you do want the context filter on, but actually it does mean that a relation view can show almost anything you like. So I could add, for example, a new table. And in this, time, this case, I don't want to show tasks. I could show something completely random 
I could show salaries. And they will be context filtered based on a path to the project. So in this case, we're seeing the salaries from the assignees from project A. Not sure how useful it is, but it allow, shows the power of relation views. In the left hand column, you also see rich text field. These can be expanded if you want to focus on the rich text field without the distraction of other fields. And you can click to see the version history, which is all the changes that have been made to that uh, rich text field over its lifetime. And you can restore to a previous version if that's what you want. Within this layout, you can choose to add new fields if you wanted to add some of the characteristics to the project. And you can also choose which fields to show and how they're arranged. So I can choose to drag and drop fields and I can choose to hide fields. And I can choose to always hide the team or I can choose to only hide when it's empty. So for example, the effort field hide when empty. You can also choose here to add fields that aren't currently showing. So for example, I want to see the modification date and now it appears. With the two column layout, sometimes the information in the right hand column is important enough that you want to be able to see it pinned in the left hand side. So I'm going to say I'm going to pin Mark as the owner. And just like with other fields, you can choose how to show that. So I want to show it with his full name. So now I've got a pin field for the owner and actually I don't need it here anymore. So I'll hide it there. Similarly, I might want to put the tags as pinned fields and hide them here. Now, if I added more pin fields and added the assignees, you could see here that I've got Mark showing as the owner and I've got these assignees showing. And let's say I show those with their name as well. And let's say that I change the order. Now I could imagine looking at this and being a little bit uncertain about who the owner is and who the assignees are. And that's one way, one reason why you might want to switch to a single column layout instead of a two column layout. With a single column layout, you can choose to have fields that were traditionally in the right hand column above the left hand complex fields. So now I can choose to show the owner and I'm already showing the assignees and I'm going to move the assignees from down below to above and now it's much more obvious what those relationships are. So instead of just seeing Mark, Mary and Anna I can see what role they're playing in this project. I don't need to see who created this uh, project so I'm going to hide that. I don't need to see when it's created so I'm going to hide that as well. You can choose to minimize the upper fields when you're in single column view and then they look rather like pin fields. Sometimes of course different people need to see different fields when looking at entity view and that's where multiple entity views comes in handy. If you go to the field chooser, you can enable multiple views. And now you see we have view one. And I'm going to add an additional view called view two. Now you notice view two is back to the two column layout, whereas view one is the single column layout. Maybe different people have different preferences. And this way you can switch between your preferred layout. So in view two, the person who likes looking at view two doesn't want to see the whiteboard, so they'll hide those. Doesn't want to see documents, so they'll hide those. Comments are very important, so they're going to come up to the top. They're going to choose not to show assignees as a pin field. You can have very different layouts with multiple entity views. And if you pin them, 
that means they will appear here as tabs for you to choose between. And your choice of view is remembered. So every time I visit the project, I'll see view one and somebody else might visit choose view two. And when every time they visit the project, they'll see view two. This makes entity view very powerful. So there you have it. I hope that guided tour was somewhat useful and maybe there was something in there you discovered you didn't already know about. Enjoy.